This is New Zealand's biggest gap year, an epic challenge that my partner Laura and I decided to tackle a few years back. The challenge? Doing 365 activities all around New Zealand in 365 days. And today we are checking out one of the most unique geothermal park in Rotorua, it's Orake Korako. So check it out and catch up with me at the end of the video. It is raining so much today here in Rotorua, New Zealand, but believe it or not, that is the perfect weather to go experience one of its many geothermal parks. Today we're going to Orake Korako, which is one of the lesser known geothermal park around the Rotorua area. It's a bit of a trek, you've got to take the car out of the city and then take a boat across the river to finally land on this beautiful natural wonder. Oraki Korako is also known as the Hidden Valley and as we seem to be the only ones here we can definitely see why it's called that but that also might be something to do with the rain. Once we cross the mighty Waikato River we onboard onto the largest silica terrace I have ever seen in my life. It's so large in fact that it seems to divide the whole forest in two. There's a boardwalk which goes straight across it and all that steam venting up below us keeps our legs nice and toasty. This is the largest terrace life. of this so Araki Karako can... geothermal park. It's called the Emerald Terrace and there's about 20 there's million litres of silica enriched water flowing over it every single day. All the terraces here have really funky names like Rainbow Terraces, Cascade Terraces, Golden Fleece Terraces and one thing to note about all of them is just how vibrantly colourful they all are. We get awesome views of the whole geothermal park from various different viewpoints around the walkway. And the walkway is this big loop with lots of little side tracks. It's really well signposted with lots of information about every single feature that we're seeing. One of the main thing why Orake Korako is so famous is because it's the largest geyser field in the entirety of New Zealand with over 23 geysers going on at completely random times. To be quite honest, we actually thought we could come up with a bit of a pattern so we could update BackpackerGuide.nz and our guide of all the geothermal activities in New Zealand. But even by staying amongst them for about an hour, we actually could not figure out any pattern. So basically, you've got to go there, walk around, take your time and you'll see one, two, three and maybe ten well, geysers going off. As per the much smaller geysers, you're gonna see so many of them. They are basically bubbling super hot water and bursting out of the inside of the planet Earth. Another thing I really like about Orake Korako is all the beautiful, colorful shades that we can see all amongst the floors and the rocks. They actually come from the sulfur and one of them is so colorful, it actually has been dubbed the artist palette. That's quite a name. It's absolutely amazing the amount of things that we get to see while walking around. We could actually stay here for an entire day if we were not soaked by the rain as we are walking around. But to be fair, I do really like doing this activity under the rain because all this hot water is creating so much steam under the cold and wet weather. It makes it look so much more magical and mystical. And there is also something called the elephant rock, which apparently looks like an elephant. Hi. Head. Is end of the dusk. After following the track a little bit further, we come to another amazing viewpoint with awesome views overlooking more of those bubbling hot springs filled with steam, loads of different colours and of course more silica terraces. In fact, the silica terraces here at Orake Korako are some of the largest left of its kind in New Zealand. There used to be some more famous silica terraces in New Zealand called the pink and white terraces, which you'll hear a lot about when in Rotorua, but these were destroyed in 1886 with a huge volcanic eruption completely wiped them out. The next major highlight that we're seeing at Araki Karako is something called the Rua Tapu Cave which drops 36 meters into a volcanic tuff into this giant hot pool at the bottom. It's only one of two known caves formed by the geothermal activity Araki in the Karako whole world. But for me personally, my favorite feature at Araki Karako is the bubbling mud pools. They are so mesmerizing. And the viscosity and the just pure thickness of the mud is so mesmerizing to watch. And it makes a sort of glooping noise the whole time. It's really awesome. 
After having fun with the bubbling mud, we actually really surprised of the amount of native bush that we find around this geothermal park. In my mind, I really picture the geothermal park to be kind of a bare, desolated land that looks absolutely unlike anything else in the country, but we are nestled in the middle of the New Zealand native bush with manica, kanika trees and a ton of other native plants. The next place that we stumble upon is Soda Stream. It's probably the most picturesque place in Orakikurako and it looks absolutely gorgeous. The water is crystal clear and you can see how deep these geysers goes. But although it looks really inviting in this really cold and wet weather, we should really not go nowhere near it because it's scorching hot. After that, we're actually Still retracing clear, our step back toward the boat that took us to Orake Korako. It was an absolutely amazing experience to see this place under the wet weather and see how steamy it can get. But although we're not made of sugar, we are absolutely soaking wet and we need some sugar to feel better after such a dreadful day. So we are heading toward the Orake Korako Cafe to treat ourselves to some delicious treats. After arriving back at the Oraki Korako Cafe, we're watching the cafe staff feeding the squirming eels in the river below. Then we decide to feed ourselves with some sweet treats for the end of the day. At Oraki Korako. Korako? Correct. At Oraki? Correct. Yes. <laughs> Today we are going to a hidden valley of geothermal activity at Oraki Kokaro. Fuck! Oraco, you Fuck! All right, everybody, I hope that you enjoyed this video. There's definitely a lot uh, to see on this video because Araki Koroko has so many different kind of spots to uh, film and take photos of. So let's go over some of the questions and comments that you guys had the first time we published the video. And we're starting with Ty. Ty says, I love geothermal hotspots and enjoying them in the rain. Um, so do, do we, we really do like them in the rain. He continues by saying that the Rotorua area is definitely going to have to be checked out on my way to Gisborne. Thanks for your video. Um, yeah, it's absolutely a must do. If you're coming to the northern end of New Zealand, I think that you absolutely have to check out Rotorua for sure. We also have Kiwi Anju in uh, the uh, comment section that says that if you're still in the Rotorua area, he will recommend checking out Canopy Tools. They're combining zip lining and conservation. He did it a couple of years ago and it was amazing, but it, uh, he uh, heard that they are even better now after the recent expansion. Uh, so yeah, Rotorua Canopy Tool is a place that we have checked out before and it is absolutely exceptional. It is one of the best zip lining tools in New Zealand for sure. If you get a chance to, um, to check them out do so and if you're into zip lining like you have to have this one in your itinerary we have matthew that says another amazing video oh i love the compliment matthew and he say i learned about the explosion of mount tarawera and it's very interesting how the explosion happened i got to go into the center and now the dead volcano and slide down on the slope it was really fun and overall a great experience we will showcase this quite soon on the channel so don't uh, don't I mean do hold your breath and, and don't don't leave uh, Okay, Ruth says I remember going to Orake Korako when my kids were little at that time You could walk right down to the cave and and uh, all the way to the water and at the bottom So yeah, you could do a, a lot more I guess now safety procedures are a little bit more, you know kind of uh, uh, You know prominent let's say Anna Wita says there is wonderful photography well done You have certainly captured the area so beautiful, but she wasn't there um she say she asked wasn't there a terrible pong so did it smell well i need geothermal park usually kind of smells a little bit but you get accustomed to it really quickly so you don't have to panic too much ivy's poison asks a good question hi guys how long does it take for the whole experience including the boat ride so just to make it clear the boat ride is like less than five minutes it's like super short you're literally just crossing a river right but yeah all together if you were to just walk at like a slow pace and really take everything in i'd say it will take you about two hours uh not much longer for us it always takes longer because we film so much but um yeah that's just uh that's just I think how long it will take and then we have id divert lamb that says uh, wow this is something i'm going to see i'll add it to my ever-growing list of things to do i think id divert has like a list which is going to take him like three years in new zealand to do by this point but yeah you know we're glad to know that we're inspiring you all right if you are planning a trip to new zealand head to nzpocketguide.com it's new zealand's largest travel guide and it's written by both laura and i if you want to interact with us check out the nz travel show it's happening at 8 a.m on sunday 
a New Zealand time every single week and we take all your questions about traveling in New Zealand then so it's a lot of fun to hang out together and plan an epic trip to New Zealand at the same time stay awesome